When I first went to therapy, I was a ball of anxiety. I used to struggle with trying to people please, you know, making sure that people didn't think this about me or think that about me. And I got tired. I got so tired, it's mentally draining. People don't even know what the hell they want. So while we be up here trying to please them, ask them what they want. They can't even answer the question, but they criticize you in a minute. In five seconds flat, they will tell you everything that's wrong with you. But then if you ask them what they want, they can't even tell you. y'all it's your girl dr nina and today i'm coming at y'all a little bit more laid back and i think sometimes you guys really enjoy a lot of these videos a lot more where we're more personal talking about things that you might not get to talk about in your day-to-day -day lives but also being very helpful and giving you insight on my life and things that might motivate you for your own so today we really gonna dig into some things that i have encountered in my life that i think might be beneficial for you that might help you make some decisions and think about some ways that you might grow on your your own personal journey. All items that I discuss today or anything I bring up can be found down below in the information section. And while I have you, make sure you thumbs up this video if you like it, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel and also my vlog channel. Make sure that you come back on all Thursdays and some Sundays for video uploads. And also be sure to turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Make sure y'all check out that video I did a while back on self-care and different things you could do on a self-care day to take care of yourself. That can give you some other ideas beyond what we're going to talk talk about today to really help with the physical as well. I got that link down below for you. And while we're at it, talking about self-care, I wanna thank Scentbird for partnering with me on today's video. A lot of y'all probably already know what Scentbird is, and for those of you all who don't, I have shown it in some previous videos. Y'all know your girl loves feeling and looking good, but also smelling good, because that just adds to a good feeling all around. So basically, they have over 450 different scents and designer perfumes on their website. It allows you to try a 30 they supply them without committing to buying a full bottle. They have a lot of scents like Prada, Tom Ford, and even Versace. Versace, Versace, hey. <laughs> And since they're a 30 day supply, they're a lot larger than the samples you can get in the store. Scentbird also allows you to upgrade to get two to three cents per month. I received three this month and they are all bomb. These bad boys are perfect to travel with, easy to operate, literally just like a lipstick. You can take them out, you can reuse the casing. They're just so awesome. And the sprays last forever and mine usually last way more than 30 days. So click the link below and get 30% off your first month with my code. And as usual, I am sipping from my Yay Organics juice bottle. I'm having the acai berry and a little bit of coconut powder and wheatgrass. Of course, this is my bottle that blends and also charges your phone. Acai berry, I've been really into that lately because it's good for antioxidants and it also lowers your cholesterol levels along with other things. So if you're interested in this bottle, check it out in the links below, of course. So the meat and potatoes for today. As a psychologist, I am always asked, you are a psychologist, so why the hell do you go to therapy? And the reason why people ask me that is because I'm very open about the topic of therapy, going to therapy, encouraging others to go to therapy. And I know that there's a lot of stigma around talking about going to therapy because people assume that if you go, you must be crazy or something crazy is going on. When in all actuality, a lot of people that choose not to go who have issues walking around putting their issues off on other people are actually the ones that really need to be in therapy. <laughs> It's not a problem with you having a problem. The problem comes in when you don't seek help for the problem and then your problems start affecting other people. It's affecting your life so much that your life could be so much better if you just went and got the help that you needed. There's so many places you can go. There's sliding scale fee clinics out here or free treatment. If you're a college student, a lot of times your school will offer certain sessions that you can go to or a certain amount of sessions you can opt for per year. You don't have to be a hurt person that hurts people. And instead of us getting help we like to point the blame at other people all the time, not realizing that we're the common denominator in a lot of the bullshit that we encounter. Therapy has been the reason why I keep such a cool and level head. I have been so blessed to understand not only therapy and giving it, but also understanding as a clinical psychologist and a school psychologist, why it's important for me to take it in. And I'm able to reflect on myself. I have a high stress job. It's important for me to make sure that I'm maintaining my mind, my thought processes, the things that I'm going through and have a constant reflection of how those things are affecting me day by day. So I'm gonna break down some of the reasons I chose 
chose to go to therapy. There wasn't one big situation that happened, but I have come through a lot in my life. And so sometimes those things pile up and cause issues in your later life. And I knew as a grown ass woman, I did not want to put my problems off on other people, nor did I want to make excuses for the problems in my life that I had failed to work through on my own. I started going about six years ago and I've gone every two to three weeks since. I usually do not go a month without seeing my therapist, mainly because it helps me to really reflect on what I'm doing, my own life, my feelings about situations, my feelings about people, my feelings in relationships. It's helped me to also work with people better and also accept their issues much better. And because I have a high stress job, it's helped me to look at those situations and see how those might indirectly affect my own life. And to be honest, it helped me sort through my own past so that I can move forward through the present and be successful and be happy and do well. And I credit it for helping me to maintain good self-esteem and also not care so much about what other people have to say about me. I really have my own opinions, my own thoughts, my own struggles. I understand myself inside out. So that's why people don't often see me fall apart when it comes to certain situations. I've had people tell me all the time, you're so strong, things happen to you and you just keep on going. Well, a lot of times, it's because I've really done the work. Being in therapy helps me to constantly reevaluate and evaluate my life. So when big situations come, I'm not like freaking out. I already have skills. I know how to cope. I know how to work with things. I know how to work with people. So if even my friends need me, my family, I'm gonna be there and I know how to be there for them and also sort through my own crap. And a lot of times we don't have those skills. That's why it's important to take care of your mind, just like you wanna take care of your body. You can't put a band-aid on your brain. I would have times where I would have mood swings or sometimes where I would be sadder than other times or where I would be anxious or have a lot of anxiety or find it hard to focus. So I would have a lot of issues that were dealing with things that I didn't even know were causing me problems. Even though there wasn't a big traumatic event that was happening, I was still having trouble keeping myself together sometimes, to be honest. So it really helped to go to a therapist so that I could hear and objective voice. Sometimes we go to other people for advice, but they're invested in you for so many other reasons. So the advice that they give you is going to be beneficial to them. Let's say for instance, you pay for something of theirs or you give them money or you give them time. They're not really going to advise you against those things, especially if it's going to take something away from them. A therapist doesn't have that kind of investment in you. They are a person who does not know you one way or the other. They're not going to get paid anything different. They're not going to have any investment in your life other than making sure that you're healthy. They're also a person who, by law, has to keep your secrets. They're also a person who keeps confidentiality and privacy. So you know that your business does not become pillow talk. So that was another reason why I chose to go to a therapist because I knew I could tell them my deepest, darkest secrets. And some of those things were things that I struggled with. Some things that I wouldn't even speak out loud to other people, not even my closest friends. But once I went to therapy, it made it easier for me to be vulnerable with people. It made it easier for me to be transparent. I created a lot of the solid foundation y'all see to really digging into becoming a better person through therapy, through working with someone who could see me from the outside looking in. They weren't in my family business. They weren't in my relationships. All they wanted was for me to be my best. I've had a lot of people tell me that, well, I've gone to therapy before and it didn't really work. What people don't realize is you've been alive for a lot of years, right? And it took time for you to build up experiences. They didn't happen overnight. They didn't just pop up right now. Your issues can't be solved in a session or two. They're going to have to be worked through. And some of the things are going to have to be worked through separately. You got to give everything time to work. Six years, it wasn't just to solve one issue. I'm constantly in there reviewing myself in my life. And it's not always negative stuff. That's another thing. It's just talking. It's just making sure that I'm able to voice my concerns, my thoughts and feelings. And even before I have conversations with certain people, I can practice with my therapist. I can talk about the ways I feel when I talk to people or what they make me feel, how I might better communicate, how I might better work with others, how I might present myself better. So one of the bigger reasons that I went to therapy was to even discuss my adoption, being an adopted child and what did that mean to me and how did that affect me? I don't think that it affected me so much as I've shared with you guys, but I remember that so many people in finding out that I'm adopted, it's often like a negative, like, well, wow, how did you become what you become and you were adopted? And I think what that started to do to me was make me think that, you know, sometimes you're not 
worthy of certain things because of how you were born or who you were born to or how you were raised. I had to realize that that wasn't true. I had to take that power back. The way I was raised was to be proud of it. My mother told me from day one in any way that I could understand, it was never a sad thing. And so I had to even learn how to navigate that, how to navigate that in my relationships. Did I have abandonment issues? Did I always want to have the upper hand in relationships because I didn't know if a person was going to leave? If your own biological parents left, then maybe someone else is very disposable as well. So I had to work through all of those different feelings and thoughts. And you can see how that wasn't something that was new, but it can affect the rest of your life. So if you're walking around with stuff, it continues to grow as you get older. You start to get more set in your ways. And that's why therapy is important because it's gonna help you break those negative chains of behavior and help you become better. I also went in to talk about failed relationships, but even the ways that they would end, I think I would sometimes blame myself and I had to really look at the situations like, wait a minute, <laughs> you can't blame yourself for everything. I think that I really needed that objective voice because I think in our world today, women period, especially I think black women are often blamed for so much stuff that we're not even responsible for. You know, them feeling like this or feeling like that or them behaving like this. When people have to take responsibility for their own behaviors and decisions, I had to realize that things that had happened in relationships weren't my fault. Even with choosing and, and picking a mate, yeah, that could have been done a bit better sometimes. I even had to work through that. Therapy became a good way for me to talk through those situations and to also stop blaming myself for stuff that wasn't even my problem. And also to be able to see how people can, you know, emotionally harm you in life if you don't let go of the hurt and the pain that comes from certain situations. But you might continue to carry that into new relationships, new friendships, new jobs even. Sooner or later, you realize that you become a person that nobody wants to be around. And I never wanted to be that person and not become the person who was bitter, but yet the person that was better. I also went to therapy because I was raised highly religious and highly Christian. Church of God in Christ. If you were Church of God in Christ or Pentecostal, go ahead and click that like button and let me know something about your Church of God in Christ experiences. I know for me, I struggled with a lot of the teachings. I'm, I'm still a Christian person, still very spiritual. I would say I'm less religious. I had to even go to therapy about that because I think a lot of the things I had internalized were also pretty negative. I'm not saying that the Bible teaches teachings were negative. I'm saying that some of the people that were in charge of the teachings were kind of teaching them to their own agenda and less to the agenda of God. For me, that became a problem because I would see people sinning or engaging in behaviors that they talk so negatively about, but yet condemn other people. And that bothered me. What you guys don't know, and this was well before I ever came to YouTube, I went through a time where I kind of questioned God. I was kind of hurt in the church before, and I really questioned why bad things get to happen to good people. Overall, the church people that I was exposed to sometimes just seemed quite hypocritical and weren't always teaching the fullness of the word. And that affected sometimes how I looked at relationships, how I looked at people, how I looked at the topic of sex, my own walk in Christianity, my worldview, also just understanding others and their religion and being accepting of people and loving of people and not condemning people because I don't have a heaven or hell to put nobody in. And that really helped me <laughs> to really figure out where those thoughts were coming from and to become a better person. Also to define what a better person meant to me and not so much what other people deem important or the portions of the Bible that they choose to go by because it's so funny a lot of these people that condemn people. What you notice is they don't follow the whole Bible. You know, they follow parts of it and they always quote the same part. It's just annoying, but whatever. And that also led to me getting a better hold of my identity. I remember when I was younger, I've always been pretty talented. I've always been kind of loud, silly, crazy, comedic, all of those different things. And I think a lot of times that was a struggle for others. <laughs> Not all people. I, I've always had a strong circle of friends, so clearly I have no problem maintaining relationships. But I would have some people that, you know, would want to pick on me or say things about what I talked like or what I did or how I did it or how silly I was or how I thought I was all that. And I used to 
to struggle with trying to people please, you know, making sure that people didn't think this about me or think that about me. And I got tired. I got so tired. It's mentally draining. It's annoying to try to people please. People don't even know what the hell they want. So while we be up here trying to please them, ask them what they want. They can't even answer the question, but they criticize you in a minute. In five seconds flat, they will tell you everything that's wrong with you. But then if you ask them what they want, they can't even tell you. And so I would find myself in these situations. When I first went to therapy, I was a ball of anxiety. I had so much nervousness about everything, whether it came to my job, opinions online. Sometimes I would lose sleep, I would be tired, I would be angry, and wouldn't even know why. And it would affect the way that I communicated with others, how I expressed myself, because somebody always had something to say. And what I had to learn through therapy is that in life, people will always have something to say. So if you're always gonna be pleasing people, you'll be doing that for a lifetime. You have to come up with your own rules, your own goals, seek your higher being, have good mentors, have good people in your circle that can give you guidance and also check you in your wrong. I was trying to please people that did not matter in my life. I realized I was pleasing or trying to please people that didn't even have a hold on their own life. I even gained a little weight during that time because I remember going back to my comforts, which was food. The good thing going to therapy was being able to even point out those triggers. And it was the same thing with my weight loss journey, understanding more about me because around the time I started losing weight was my first time going to therapy about 12 or 13 years ago. And I really fought and struggled with understanding why I was gaining so much weight and why I couldn't get the energy to really take it off. And it was through therapy that I learned that it was my comfort zone. I was comfortable being the fat funny girl. I was comfortable with everybody being comfortable with me instead of not liking me. I think I was afraid of having more things that people could hold against me uh could say something negatively about and that's exactly what happened when i lost the weight everybody had something to say but then it became more about my own opinion therapy can help you realize the reasons why you behave how you behave sometimes we don't know that and we can't see that and sometimes through talking through a person who's a professional who's trained to help you get to the bottom of that it's going to help you get better i still got flaws i ain't out here saying i'm flawless I, I mean, I do say that sometimes, but I still have areas of work. I still have things that I constantly kind of battle with. I mean, I have high anxiety. I have generalized anxiety. I already know that. Also, I've learned to channel that in a way that it becomes positive. I'm able to speak to myself a lot of times and calm and self-soothe instead of looking for others to validate and accept me. I accept myself first. If you know you struggle with things, and even if you don't, sometimes you are struggling. And because you don't see yourself daily from the outside. Sometimes you just need to go in and dump your brain. You don't have to go every two weeks. You don't even have to go every month. You'll only feel better. You'll be more sure of yourself and you'll be more free. That's why I'm so transparent. The judgment that comes from others, they don't know me, but I do. And I know a lot of people that quickly judge and assume things about others really don't know much about themselves. So hopefully that urges you to kind of seek the treatment that you need and figure out what's going to be best. Another thing that a lot of you all ask me about is like, what's next for my career? What are the next things I want to do. So one of the biggest things you all know, I'm an associate and tenure professor and a clinic director. I do plan to continue that for a while longer, at least. I love what I do. I enjoy it. I've won lots of teaching awards and also my clinic. Several articles have been written about it. I enjoy that part of my life. I love giving back to different people that need help and also those that want to learn. I love seeing people grow. Let's be honest, I got ADHD and I don't like being tied down to one job. So it really works for me to be a professor because I don't have to always be in the office and I love the flexibility of the life. Being an academician has given me so much freedom and that's what I love about the field. And so with work as a psychologist and coach, I have been running the beta version of my program, The Sky Is Not Your Limit, 10 Solid Steps or Ways to Transform Your Life Now. You can fill out my questionnaire down below in the information section and see if you're a candidate for the course at this time. We're running smaller classes right now until I open it up to the larger public. It has been an awesome experience and it's gonna be starting up again in September. I've already run my first class and that was really awesome but the basis of this program is really giving you solid ways and coping mechanisms and really feeding back into resiliency being the best you can be in spite of whatever you're going through I don't care if you want to be the best bagger at the grocery store being the best mother being the best person you can be being the best at whatever you do and really seeking to 
make goals and strides towards those goals. That's exactly what I'm doing with this course. And then these upcoming webinars will also be an addition to that. That's what I'm loving in my space of being a licensed clinical and school psychologist for me to be able to work with not only adults, but also children. I love it. I love to see the growth. I love to see the development. I really love when people have tough issues because I like to see them work through their issues and get to a better place. And I'm continuing to serve on the Association for State and Provincial Psychology Boards and helping to write the second part of our board exam, which is required for becoming a licensed psychologist. I'm out here trying to make history, y'all. I'm trying to grind. Give my future children a few things to be proud of. I feel like I've been given so many blessings and just by speaking them to you all, I don't know how this works, but I have gotten so many opportunities to do the things I love. I'm being honored in August by the Houston Health and Black Business Expo, and I am so excited. I'm gonna be speaking there. It is free to attend. I have the links down below if you wanna get your ticket and you'll be in Houston on August 4th. It's just a joy to even be considered for such a thing, especially since last year was my first official year really living in Houston. To be recognized at this level makes me feel like the work that I do is important important. It's needed. It's allowing me to continue to build an empire that is really focused on those things that I love. And it only makes me want to continue to grow even more. And I had told you guys that I wanted to do more speaking to organizations now about mental health. So those high stress, high level jobs, being able to come in and consult or speak at different conferences for those organizations and God answer yet another prayer. I'm being uh, brought out to speak in New Orleans the week of August 9th at the National Society of Blacks in Computing. It is a part of organizations dedicated to mentoring young black computer scientists. And I am gonna be speaking to them about navigating the stress levels in academia, all of those different things, and specifically bringing in psychological tips that really help with that. So I have been blessed to claim what I said I wanted to do just this year. Again, going back to this mental health thing, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't even be able to keep a straight head to do all of these things. So after that, I'm gonna go on vacation and I am going to come back and speak in Houston at the school time harvest. And I'll be speaking about achievement to elementary school kids before they start school. So that's another cool thing that I'm excited about. And that's happening August 18th. I'm also going to be a speaker and panelist at the Fayetteville, North Carolina Natural Hair Expo. And I'm so excited about that as well. The last thing that is a really big focus for me this year is I'm finally finishing up my certified person trainer certification through the National Association of Sports Medicine. So I'm super excited to get that done. I cannot wait until that's over. It's been something that's kind of been on the back burner, but I've known that I was going to return and complete it. So guys, y'all, I just want y'all to pray for me, send me up and think of me as I continue to complete a lot of these life goals. I hope that those are motivating for you as well, knowing that you can do whatever you want want to do. I don't care about your circumstances. I've been there. I've been low. I've been down. I've not had. I've gone through situations. I've not always had the best and yet I feel that I'm reaping the benefits of the hard work. Just keep working. Stay focused on your goals. Do what it is you want to do and I know that you too will reach exactly what you need and whatever you see. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for sitting through this live chat. I know y'all love these types of chats. If there's any other video ideas you have for me, let me know down below. Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much, guys. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.